hello welcome to my youtube channel today i'm going to be working on the stamp of the month kits that i'm going to be sending to anyone who orders the stamp of the month for november 2022 from me and i just want to mention that i will not send base pages through the mail i'm sure you have gray cardstock very light gray or even white you can use to use as your base pages as postage um, for mailing 12 by 12 is crazy. Right now I'm offering the layout kit with a $50 purchase where you get the stamp of the month for free or for $5 or you can buy the stamp of the month outright for the $19.95. Then I'll send you the layout kit for free without the base pages. If you place an order that totals $100 which could include your shipping tax and whatever VIP credits you use, or um, if you're a VIP. But if it's $100, I'll send you the layout kit plus the card kit. And if you place an order that is $125 or more before shipping tax and VIP credits are applied, then I will send you the layout kit, the card kit, and all of the cutout SVG files from the current month's paper collection, which is Christmas Story. Then if, I, if you get to that point, I will include the base pages because you have to have base pages in the SVG cuts because there's a layout with that. This is the stamp of the month. It is S2211 Christmas Snowflake Mandalas. And I absolutely love this stamp of the month. This has got to be one of my most favorite ones so far. And you're going to take this and you need a 4x4 four four block or something that large to put it on. And I believe you need a 3x3 three three for that one. And then this fits on a 1x1. One one. So let me pull those out. So there's the 3x3. Three there's the four by four. There's the one inch one. And you're also going to need a border one. I use the one by three and a half for that. All right, so we're going to take this off. And when you take these off of your carrier sheet, be careful because the stamps can rip you, especially the first time when they're really sticky. After you've used them a while, they, um, don't stick quite as much so they come off a little bit easier but you still need to be careful you don't want to rip your stamps right okay we're going to use this little border it's like a little diamond you can see it better on the carrier sheet that's here isn't that cool it's one of my favorite things are the border stamps if you've watched any of my videos, you know I like borders. <laughs> so, and uh, the blocks have a line on them that helps you to place your stamp on straight. Now I'm not going to need the foam insert sheet this because I'm using my Versamats. And I'm going to flip them over so I can use the foam cushion on the reverse side. I like using two versamats, so if I'm doing a two-page layout, I have enough room to spread both of them together. Okay, looking at the layout sheet that I've already done as my prototype, I stamped some of the small stamps on the back and on the base. Then I used this four-inch piece and I stamped a border on both sides. The glitter paper, the zip strip, I tore these two layers and then another layer of the glitter paper. So it's pretty straightforward for the base anyway. And I believe I used Mist and the Seabrook colors. These are our new colors that I'm using. So here they are. They're very pretty, very soft colors. So let me just bring those in. And I only need to stamp in the upper portion of the layout. That won't work. I need this part. And I'm going to do first and second generation. 
And I'm kind of going to go in a W or S shape, Z shape, whatever you want to call it. And then I'll fill in with the mist and the periwinkle snowflakes. So I'm not quite sure where I'm going to put my photos, as you may not either. So just give yourself a little bit of room to make your layout and make it flow so that when you find photos to put on it or if you already have them, you may you can determine where you want your snowflakes to show. But otherwise, just fill it in, make it look nice. Um, the S shape that I like to use is like in a triangle. So I've got two dark ones there, so we'll do another one here. Another one here and a third. So we'll still try and go in that S shape or the W. And because your photos are going to be somewhere, you know, no one's going to know that it's an S shape or a W shape. I'm going to make sure I put them on the correct bottom part. Okay, now let's do periwinkle. And this one I can fill in. Or I might feel there's a need for another color. There's a half of one there, so hopefully I'll have something to put over that because that didn't stamp quite right. I probably went off of the paper somehow and didn't get a good inking. So let's create one there. I'm not going to try and double stamp that because I'll probably mess it up. So let's just not even go there. All right, so that looks good. Now let's go ahead and put our layers on. So in your items that I will send are all these pieces. So you've got your glitter strip for the top and the bottom. That goes in the middle. And here and here. And in the prototype one, the, the paper that I used for the top was a gray dot. I don't have any more. So I'm going to use this one. And if you tear away from you, you're going to get the white edge. And I'm going to leave enough because I'm going to have to tear it again to get a white edge on this piece. And I also need to make sure I have um, the same amount on the ends because when they meet up in the middle for the double layout here, I want it to match with this piece, okay? So either I match this end or I match this end. It's either one. So we'll just make sure that one of them is thicker. And you can go up high, up low, because you're going to be layering this. Now here is where I'm going to meet. So it's going to be about where that little leaf is there. And I don't know if anyone's going to measure it but I try to do it for the sake of my eye, making it pleasing when I look at it. All right, so that's one. Now we're gonna do the same thing to this one. All right, that is done. Now this piece is gonna go down here like this. And what I'm going to do so I'm going to put the glitter piece on it and then use that as a guide for stamping my border. So let me get my glue. I'm going to use the Tombow Mono Liquid Blue. And you need just a small amount. You don't need a lot. And I like to rub it into the, my paper so that I don't have any seepage. Or try to avoid it as much as I can. And then just line it up and lay it down. Gives you a little bit of wiggle room with the liquid so that you can line it up perfectly. Set it aside to dry. And then we'll do this one as well. And I need to always remember 
to put my glue on the base and then I can attach my layer on top. Then I don't take the chance of dropping it with glue on it, which I have done many times. Okay, so now we're going to use the mist because it's a little bit of a darker color to stamp our border. And one of the best things about clear stamps is you can see through to line them up like this. I'm going to bring in a piece of scrap paper so that I don't get any ink on my base page. And we'll do the same for this side. All right, now that those are done, I'm going to attach them to my base page. I love this paper. It's sad to cover up all these beautiful flowers, but that's okay. I have lots more of it. <laughs> It's the bulk paper from the Cherish collection that will be our paper collection for next month. So I'll be using more of that then. And again, just a small amount gets this to attach. So you don't want your paper to warp by adding too much glue. It's really a very inexpensive way. You're not going to have these fall off in the 20 years from now like you could with the tape runners. They're much more unreliable. Now see how that's not matching up? Let's see if it matches up better the other side. Just because. There, that matches up much better. Okay. So now... I'm going to, these I want to put up with some foam adhesive, I think. You don't have to. Actually, maybe I will lay them flat. Because it did give me a little bit of an issue when I was putting on my photo placeholders on the other layouts. And I'll show you that. Here, I had to make sure I was above it or below it because it had some dimension to it. And then the snowflake I had to put on top of it and add dimension underneath it. The same with the title, the Frosty Snowflakes. And for this one, I actually put foam underneath the both sides of the photo mat. So if you don't have photos, it may be safer to put these down flat so that you don't have to worry about the dimension. And the cardstock I used on the base is either mink or I may have pulled out some of our old color pebble. Now I'm gonna lay these upside down so that I can do the top. And this is going to go down first. And then this will be layered on top. And then the glitter paper will go over that. So you can leave yourself an edge border if you want. You can have it close up to the top if you want. It's totally up to you. So this is just the way that I designed it. So you certainly can make it work for you and uh, do it differently. That's fine. I would love to see pictures of these layouts after you make them as well. If you could post them to the Facebook page and share, I would absolutely love it. Okay, so this paper. And um, in the kits, you may get different papers. If I ran out of one, I think I had enough of this one for all of them. 
for this light glacier, I believe it is. It might be the Seabrook color. But I'm going to make sure that I put this one down and this one at the same time. So they're the same height. And again, you don't need a lot of glue. This is going to be have something glued on top of it in addition to what you put on it. So let's get these layered. Let's see how far off I am there. Okay. There we go. And I'm having a heck of a time getting these matched up. All right, that's better. Another advantage of liquid glue. If you can't line things up, it allows you time to get it lined up. All right. So now we're going to layer the gray one on top. And since I know right where it's going to go, I can just put my glue down. And I could put the glue on this piece as well, but... If I decide I want to tuck something up underneath there, maybe one of the snowflakes, I could do that. If I don't, I'll glue it down. I'm going to lay, layer my glitter paper directly down the edge here. I don't want to raise it up with dimension again because you never know what it might have there. I do like the dimension on the other one too, but... It's up to you whether you want to add dimension. And that just hides that crease and makes it look very finished. It gives it a really nice edge. I'll do the same for this one. Okay, so now we have our base pages done. This is a really nice layout idea for any kind of a paper collection or pictures it's very calm it's not busy but it's very pretty nonetheless so in your package you're also going to receive all these other pieces so the base for your snowflakes and your frosty and then you have some pieces to stamp on. These are some old vellum I had in my stash, and I thought I'd use them and get them used up. They're very pretty having the medium mandala stamped on it with black. But if you don't like the textured or pattern on the vellum, you can pull out some of uh, plain vellum that you may have. You're also going to receive a little baggie here with your glitter snowflakes. You got one of each. They may be different colors depending on what I was playing with. And then you're also going to receive your brads and a bunch of glitter circles. And then cardstock circles and vellum circles. You don't have to use them all. You can use them all if you want to. I just wanted to provide a variety. All right, so we're going to get stamping now. One other thing I want to mention, the inner part of the snowflake, some of them didn't come out cleanly, but they are cut through and will come out very nicely. You just need to use a tool to push them out. The nature of the glitter paper. It cut beautifully with my Close to My Heart die cut machine. And I think it was uh, the regular pressure setting. I didn't have to use any extra pressure to get them cut out. That very detailed snowflake. It's very pretty. And that one and then this one has some pieces that will poke out as well they're all cut through you just need to get a little pressure there and you can use these little pieces to add as decorative elements you can throw them away doesn't matter whatever you want to do with them if you have any <laughs> some I may have taken out I don't know I've made a lot of these kits
All right, now to make your snowflakes, you notice that this one, I stamped it on black on the white. The vellum is just stamped in black. And then I layered a snowflake behind it and it's nothing really special, but it's still really pretty. This one was embossed with the Princess Gold, which is out of stock at the current moment. But if you have a gold in your stash, you know, you can use that. And then this again was stamped with just black and I used tri-blend markers, the color behind it. Let's see the other one. Okay, this is the vellum that was embossed with the tinsel copper that we carried a while ago that is not in our in stock, of course, that's long gone. But um, the tinsel embossing powder looks really pretty on that. And then I colored behind it with the tribal and markers and I use some of the metallic markers to color it as well. This one was colored tone on tone and colored with tribal and markers, the same with the vellum. This one was stamped tone on tone and I used a glitter marker and some of the metallic markers to color it in. So I will emboss one just because and let's do a silver one and I think the silver would look really good I want to do this with white let's do that with white a very important step when you're embossing is to use an anti-static pouch and we do carry these this is the one I've had for years they last forever there's just uh, baby powder or talcum powder or something inside that uh, keeps it from sticking. And you can also use it to de-stick your stickers. So I think I'll emboss that one and that one and the white one. We'll use heat embossing on all of them. I've gotten back into that kick. <laughs> go on, got go in spurts. So you take your stamp. And my Versamark pad I used at an event, and it's not down here, so I'm using an old Top Boss embossing stamp pad. And hopefully it's got some ink in it. We'll soon find out. It looks like it's got ink. Clear embossing ink. And uh, the Versamark isn't even available either. That has been sold out, so as soon as that comes back in stock, I'm going to get another one because mine is old. And... You can. I'm going to twist it so I make sure I get the edges. Press hard. Let the ink set. Now if it sticks to your stamp when you pick it up, put your finger on it to hold it down and then rub it. This finger holds it from moving. Don't take it off and try and rub it because you could smear it. you got to have it held down so that it doesn't move. All right. And there, isn't that pretty? Oh, there's lots of ink on there. All right, so let's get this embossed. I think I was gonna do silver. Here's my little container. It's a snap lock lid. They still spell, spill, so I'm still gotta be careful. If you don't use your measuring spoons to cook, you can use it to, for your embossing. They're really good. <laughs> So I'll get it covered and then tap it off. Tap lightly. You don't want to give it too vigorous. I used to give it a snap with my finger on the back, but a lot of the embossing powder would come off and then I'd have to try it again. That never really had a really thick layer of embossing after that. So I don't snap it anymore. Unless I forget to use the anti-static pouch, then you might want to. That's the nature of it sticks to everything if you don't use the anti-static pouch. Especially where I am in the winter where it's very dry. All right, so I'm going to line this up. And... I think I'm going to do this one in gold. And again, rub it, hold it down, rub it, don't let it move. And peel it up. You can't see it, but it's there. 
Let's emboss it. I don't think I got quite as much ink on it this time. But let's see. Now you can see it really well. And a little tap to get the excess off and it looks good. Let's pour this back in. This little tidy tray I've had for a long time as well. Comes in handy when I use it. It's those times when I say, oh, I'm just gonna do one. I don't need to bring it out. And then you have a disaster. All right, last one. And we're going to do white on the periwinkle. And these squares, I believe, are cut at four by four. So the stamp is just a little bit smaller. It'll fit. Okay, now pick it up, hold it down, press. Peel it up. I don't know if you can see it. Looks good. Good coating. You can see your Mandela up here. All right. Coffee filters are wonderful to use for heat embossing. Right. I'm going to get these embossed before I put something on them and ruin the embossing. I have my Totally Tiffany embossing tool. I'm going to put them under this and heat it up to melt. Actually, I probably could hold it so you can see it melt. And I'll heat this up and get it hot. Okay, I'm going to heat emboss, but turn the sound off so you can just watch it. And there, isn't that gorgeous? Wow. The next step is to stamp your smaller snowflakes on the vellum. And then your four inch snowflakes with one of the other ink colors. And I'm going to use a tone on tone. So this is the mist and this is the Seabrook. So I'll do the Seabrook first. And because this is a big stamp, sometimes turning your ink pad and over and pressing it onto the stamp helps to get a better impression. Our ink pads are nice. They would get your fingers all inky. You could hold them this way and do it too. But if you do it this way, it's the same kind of thing, right? You just got to make sure you go and get every single corner. All right, now the same thing will apply. If it sticks, I'll lift it up and press it with my fingers. Leave it down for a couple of seconds to get a good impression. Let that ink soak in. Hold it, rub it. I like to do this for these big detailed stamps just in case I didn't have enough even pressure anywhere. Oh, isn't that pretty? Good. All right, now we're going to do the mist. I 
Now, if you don't have these ink colors in your arsenal yet, you can use black or any other color that's similar. It gives it the same effect. It's perfectly fine. And then I use our intense black to stamp on the vellum. And this seems to work the best for me. I used our archival black as well, and it took a little bit longer to get it to set so that I could color and I don't have patience, so this seemed to work better. You could let it dry on its own. It takes maybe five minutes to be safe. But if you hit it with a little bit of heat from your heat gun, it works perfect. So pretty. And it doesn't matter which side of the vellum that you stamp on. I think the white leaves are the same on both sides. All right, I just wanted to note on this white one, I think I held the heat gun a little bit too long, too close, and it turned that a little bit brown. So be careful when you heat. I'm going to go with it. Um, I could always hide it under something, but I'd probably redo it if I weren't doing a video on it. But I wanted to show that to you. So coloring them. I brought our new metallic markers out. I used these on, uh, at a retreat and sold all that I had. <laughs> Everybody loved them. They're fabulous. So what you get is a fine tip. Well, you get a three millimeter bullet tip. You get a four millimeter flat tip. And you get a 0.7 millimeter fine tip. All right. So inside, you shake it, the ball mixes all that paint up. And these are from Spectre Noir. And then you press it to um, release the paint into the tip. And it is so fine it is just gorgeous so let's go ahead and just color in a little bit here so you can see it isn't that pretty they are phenomenal and another thing that i love to do with these kinds of markers we used to have some a long time ago the bullet tip ones are good for coloring in large areas and these flat tips, I like to use them to edge my paper to give it a really nice fine gold edge. Markers that I used to have a long time ago that were inferior to these, these are much nicer. I actually had a groove in the middle from me running them along so many pieces of paper. <laughs> so I am so glad to see these come into our stock and the copper is the same way same tips and let's see let's color this part it just gives a beautiful beautiful sheen and it is opaque so if you go over a line it will cover it up somewhat but it's just gorgeous and the silver and it comes in they come in a three pack all three of them for I believe they're $13.95 or $14.95 I'm not quite sure but I love coloring in the little dots too this looks like you know molten silver it's just beautiful so I will color these all and then we need to fussy cut them out. Um, some of the colors that I found from the tribal and markers that match these colors that I'm using are the vintage blue, the aqua blue, and the ice blue. The vintage blue is very close to the mist. So let's pull this out. Now these should be pretty dry. I'm going to flip them over and color on the back side and I'm going to do the leaves. And then from the front, you can see that color there. I love to the color on vellum. 
You can also use the metallic markers on the vellum. I kind of think they look better on the front. But again, totally up to you. So we'll just go through and color on the dots. Probably not a good idea to use it holding it up, but I want you to be able to see it. See how pretty that is. Okay. So what else? The aqua blue blend is the one that I found looked the best for the periwinkle. So let's color this part. We don't really have a color that matches periwinkle, but that's okay. So it looks very pretty now. Excuse me, this is the... <laughs> no wonder it looks funny. The aqua blue goes with the Seabrook color. That's the one. Looks much better. There. And again, these have the light, medium, and dark, the alcohol ink. If you've never seen them before, they have the light end, a medium, and a dark. So they're great for blending. So you put down a nice base of your alcohol lightest color. Then you can go in with your medium color and your dark color. And then I go back over with the light color to blend. And it just looks like a seamless transition ombre effect. And it does lighten up a little bit as it dries. All right, so now we're going to go with the ice blue, which is what Periwinkle looks good with. <laughs> and we will do a different section. Let's do the outer section. Yeah, that looks better. And this is the lighter color. And having the embossing really helps to hold it in the lines. And then I'll go to the medium and the darkest. This makes it look really pretty. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and color these all up. And then I will fussy cut them. I'll show you how I do that. And one nice thing about these is you can fussy cut along the inner edge or include all the outer edges. These are also nice if you you can cut it out. A lot of people cut out without the little dots here. I like the little dots. They add some a nice touch. But it does it's a little fussier cutting it, right? So I cut out some of them with just these big leaves and made it into a poinsettia. It's very pretty. You could also do just the inner circle and layer it up. It's just so many possibilities with these stamps. All right, I'll be back in a moment. All right, I finished coloring them. I just wanted to show you what I did. So this one, I just finished the parts that I started. This one I colored on the back. Have it show through. I like the silver, so I didn't want to detract from it by coloring too much. This one I outlined with the copper, and then I did the leaves with the vintage blue, I believe it was. This one I outlined with the silver, and then I just did the inner leaves. And this one was the same. I just did dots of the copper. This one I outlined with the gold. Isn't that beautiful? Because I went outside of the lines and I needed to add like a definition. <laughs> that gold metallic marker really fit the bill. This one I used my white gel pen to color, and that was different. I hadn't done that before. And then this one I really colored a lot with all three of the tri-blend markers. So it's really pretty. It's really good to do on the white. All right, now for cutting out. Use a good pair of scissors like our snips. And let's see, let's use this one. So I'm going to leave a little line around the outside edge. That way it doesn't look so bad if I try to get along 
and I cut in a little narrow or make it a little bit wider. So see, it's so easy to cut out. All right. Um, for the vellum one, let's say this one, I like to cut right along the black line. And I will go each side because it's easier for me to do with being right-handed. And then after I get all the cuts done on that side, I'll flip it over and I can go the other way and get a nice cut right into the corner. That's really nice to do when it's something you can see through. <laughs> You can't do with the cardstock. So that cuts out really nice. All right, so I'll get all these cut out and be right back. All right, these are the title pieces, and I used our irresistible paper to cut it out, and it cut out really nice. See how fine and detailed it is? So I'm going to use this Distress Oxide Speckled Egg and one of our blender brushes to just add some color to it. And because it's such a detailed, small, fine piece of paper, I put it on a Cricut mat so that it would hold it down and it wouldn't move around on me. It still is a little bit, but you can see some of the areas that's being res resisted there. It just adds a little character and interest to these. And I wanted to see how it would cut out with the Cricut. <laughs> because, you know, it looks like the frosty snowflake, so it was perfect. Okay, so now I can lift them off and glue them onto these pieces, and then this I can just wipe off with the baby wipe and the ink comes right off of the old Cricut mat. I have a little more stamping left to do, and that's on these pieces. And before I do that, I want to determine what exactly I'm going to layer my snowflakes with. So let's figure that out. Bring all these pieces back in here. And some of these brads are quite old. <laughs> Very pretty though. So I got a white one. They may be different ones in the packages. This blue one. I had a couple of these prongs break off. So then I had to glue the snowflake on with my liquid glass. So that's an alternative if you have one in the prongs break off. Any type of a metal piece. The liquid glass holds it pretty well. Just a few more here. One more brad. All right, so I need my little stamp here. And let's see what, how I'm going to layer these up. And they can be any kind of a variation. Oh, that looks pretty. That gold coming through looks kind of yellow. It just adds a little touch of color. The silver one I think I'll leave. I like the gold one like that. Maybe this on the white. Yeah, that looks really pretty. Okay, so then you can go on there. You can go there. Periwinkle will go there. And you don't have to use them all. You can if you want. Oh, that's pretty. All right, so now the big snowflake will go underneath. Oh, that looks pretty. And let's see, you can go on here. Not that one. So maybe this one. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so then I could do this on here. There we go. There are also uh, vellum ones you can use. I 
All right, so I like those. I don't think I want any more that would cover up too much of that small snowflake. Maybe we can do a vellum piece on there though. There we go. All right, so we're gonna stamp this one with black. So let's see, this one I think I would want copper, and I think I had one of these. Nope, I had a uh, one of these for it. So let's do the copper. And color those. Makes it look like it all belongs together. And you just have to touch it lightly. I'm going to show you another tip too for this to go over these edges to add that. You know, some parts that might not have been colored perfect or cut perfect, I should say. It gives that really nice edge, pops it right off of the snowflake. And this flat tip is really nice for edging. Isn't that pretty? Copper is one of my favorite colors. <laughs> Rose gold copper. All right, so let's finish these other ones. Now to make a hole, I'm gonna use my tweezers because they're sharp weapons. And just put a hole in the center of all of these. All right, I have holes in everything. <laughs> so now we're gonna put them back together. Hopefully I will put them back the way I had them. So now I'm gonna put this pretty one right in the middle of here. So you just hold the prongs together and slide your snowflake onto them. There we go. And then I take something flat, like a stamping block, and press it down to get it nice and flat as possible. So I do have to glue these together. So let's get a piece of scrap paper. Oh, look how cool those, how that's showing up now with the ink is dried this glue and I could do my little pile of glue but I'll put it this way and then tap it off because I only have these two pieces hopefully I won't get glue everywhere it gives me just a little bit of wiggle time To make sure I get it placed straight. Oh, that looks so good. All right. So you can determine how you want your snowflakes. I love having it right here on the... This red really makes it pop. And the Y portion fits right nice and with that S so we could move it over so it's not on two pieces now I cut this part off on my other layout that one. these are all so pretty so 
So that is how you do this layout. Have fun with it. I will love, love, love to see um, what you do with your kits. If you put these together and put pictures on them or not. I would love to see pictures. Please, please let me know if you have fun making these. And if you need any information, let me know as well. Take care.